G'day guys and welcome back to Mana Down Under. For today's Commander Deck Idea video, we're covering the new Izoni Thousand Eyed. Now like always, Commando Deck Ideas will be just suggesting cards, combos, just things you might want to know with the deck. So Izoni, she's Golgari, black and green, 2 generic, double black, double green, 2-3 with Undergrowth, the new mechanic from Guilds Ravnica. When she enters battlefield, you get a 1-1 one, one black green insect token for each creature in the graveyard. We're going to build around that. And she has pay one black, one green, sack another creature, you gain one life and draw a card. So looking at this, she's very attrition based. She can bring her own army out with this undergrowth mechanic which we'll strongly build around. And we've gone with a bit of the draw and sacrifice mechanic built in. She's not a combo insta win deck, but she's very just grindy, mid to long game, take care of their creatures with your own, have a good ball presence to win the game. But I will mention one infinite combo first. Ashnold, Altar, and Death Mantle. A lot of people have pointed it out already, I'll just mention it here. The idea being Izoni enters, creates at least two other tokens, sack one token for two mana, then you sack Izoni for two mana, you got four mana, Izoni just died, pay the four for the Death Mantle to bring it back, undergrowth triggers again, you get more tokens, and you just keep looping it till you have infinite mana and infinite tokens if you want, essentially. So, other than the infinite token, we need to support our undergrowth. We need to mill. Self mill is a big part of the deck. So a staple of like Sator Wayfinder, the new Stitcher Supply or Grizzly Salvage, pretty common cards when it comes to this kind of thing. But Nyx Weaver, another option, a little bit long term, mills you every turn, and it can retrieve a card if we need to in a pinch. Hermit Druid, depending how many basic lands you run, could be a good way to go. A little bit dangerous, you can mill yourself real hard, or nothing at all, kind of a hero miss. But you can go for bigger cards like Dread Summon where you pay X and everyone mills X, and you get a ton of tokens equal number of creatures. So you're getting an army, and you're filling up the graveyards at the same time. Splinter right here, he's equal to number of creatures in the graveyard, he's undergrowth, power and toughness, and that's what we're trying to do. And he passively mills, great card in the deck. Altar of Dementia, could be a win condition or support for us either way. We can sacrifice a creature, someone can be us too, mill is equal to that creature's power. If we need it in a pinch, we can do it. Deathbridge Chant can be a bit of a numbo, because it enters the battlefield, we mill 10. Great, that's what we want to do. But at getting up, keep you randomly pick a card if it's a creature, battlefield, if not to your hand. So it's removing cards from your graveyard. But hopefully, we're milling faster than we're <laughs> retrieving. And explore is a great mechanic in this deck. Path of Discovery every creature in this battlefield, you get to explore. All those tokens our Zoni brings in, mm, yeah, you get to explore. The idea being, whenever you, you reveal the top card of your library, put that card into your hand if it's a land, so you're digging off the lands. Otherwise, you put a 1 1 counter on that creature. And then put that card back or put on top of your put into your graveyard. So graveyard, clearly. So you get your lands off your deck, you buff your creature and fill your yard. Explores are very powerful in the deck. Even the new Under Realm Lich from Guild Ravnica. It's like black green brainstorm nearly, that's the way I think of it. Great card, helps fill up that yard real quick. Dredge is a thing, you totally can go dredge. Um, Grave Troll, good enough to be banned in modern, good enough for commander. Just a constant threat through the game, nice and big. Life on the low just keeps our lands going, can't really go wrong with Dredge. Now, we've got all these tokens, we've got all this graveyard nice and full. Let's use these tokens. Let's use some packed effects to hurt our opponent. Grave Pack, Dictate of Erebos, and Push of Malachor. We've all seen these cards before on Commander. They're a staple from the format, they're a pain to deal with, and we're putting them in here. This is the deck they're made for. Our Commander can bring an army and sacrifice an army. Just add a pact, and away you go. Um, the Queen of the Gulgari in our deck is a pact because you have to pay two life when you sack a black creature and make them sack a creature. Well, tokens are black green, so that's fine. But whenever you sacrifice a green creature, you gain two life. They're also green, so we gain the life back, so it's nothing to us. Attrition is not a pact, but in the deck it works really well, because you can sack any of these tokens for direct removal of a big threat. Can't really go wrong with it. And of course, no pact deck would be complete without a few Blood Artist effects. So Blood Artist, Zulu Port, a Zulu Port, I should say. Falcon Wrath, Noble, these kind of cards, we've played with them before, again, the stable of the format, and this is the kind of deck they work well in. Poison Tip Arch is a new one from Corset 2019. It just makes your opponent lose life, but it, still, it gives us a bit more reach in our board. Now, the weenies, the tokens. Our commander can be very abusive because of a just simple into the battlefield effect. Helm of the Host is a great option on her. Gives you another commander every turn, another sack outlet if you need a backup, and the undergrowth triggers every time. You get more tokens. Conjure's Closet, end of turn, just flicker the commander, resets undergrowth, can't complain. Cuds on Kurio is more of a tunjic commander to a sorcerer nearly. The idea being you cast a Zoni, she enters, tokens come out. Since a token entered, you can bounce back Izoni, 
and then you can keep playing again. It makes it more of a sorcery, that's the best way I think of it. Um, Erratic Portal, similar idea, a lot of people use it so you just recast it. I use it more for protection, because if someone goes to board wipe, trying to remove your commander, balance her back, get her out of the danger. Because your commander is 6 mana to start off with, she's expensive. You don't want to be paying 8, 10, 12 mana, that's a big mana sink. You want to try and avoid your commander attacks if you can. And of course, weenies are expensive, you need these cards. Doubling Season is a really good card, it's still 40 bucks. Parallel Lives, I think, is 15 last time I checked. You still need them, unfortunately. They need to reprint them. Alright, so continuing off weenies. Avenger of Zendikar, we know the card, we've seen it before, brings a ton of tokens in. Tend to shoot Dryad and Mycloft work really well in the deck. They have this Sapperling sub theme going on, and they can buff the creature type as well. And Mycloth is Devour, which is technically sacrificing which works really well with pack-like effects. Creekwood Leech turns our commander's tokens into 3-3s, plus it produces its own 3-3 too. And Cage Cagebreakers, that might as well say undergrowth on attack, really, for 2-2 wolves. It's pretty spicy in this deck. I like that there's old cards that, they're not called undergrowth, but they are undergrowth, essentially. I like that. Um, and we've filled our graveyard up, so let's use it. We're not just filling it up for this trigger. We might as well use some things in there. Dread Return, Animate Dead, cheat a few creatures in, put some nice high value creatures in if you want. Whisper of the Blood I guess, and Victimize. Well, we have all these tokens we're producing, let's sacrifice them and resurrect better creatures. And Friction Reclaim, if we lose something important, we can just pay two mana, two life, get something back if we need to. Um, Journey to Eternity is a fun card. If you can flip that over into that land, pay the five, tap, resurrect a creature, you're doing pretty well. And Sheltered. She's a bit of a more of a slow roll card, but every turn, you res, they sack, can't go wrong. Living Death could be another win condition if you want to. You could really stack into the self mill plan, and I don't know, like turn 7, turn 8, have a majority of your deck in your graveyard, mill, and away you go, try and find a win that way. No, that's a lot of damage! Why'd I put that meme in the video? I hate it. Alright, so Mazarek, Cruel Death Priest, he works really well in the deck. He supports the commander so well, because she's bringing out a token army. And she can sacrifice. Mazarek, whenever a player sacrifices a permanent, put a 1 1 counter on any creature you control. Well, let's buff the army we brought in, why not? Lord of Extinction, he's huge in this deck, how can he not be? Gerard, again, undergrowth, his power and toughness is undergrowth, really, and he has a big sacrifice outlet built in that can really hemorrhage players, and he has a bit of resurrection and return built in. And then Thunderfoot, Bailoth, and Credhoof, we've seen these cards in Commander before, they're great in any token deck. They're pretty much a win if Kratoff comes out if someone's dying. No one survives a Kratoff, but there we go. If you have survived a Kratoff, let us know down below. I'll be interested to see, see what stories people have. Um, support's more up to you. There's, you could go a lot of ways or no ways, really. Skull Clamp is probably a must-have in this deck because you've got these 1-1 one -one tokens. Um, and if they do get buffed by a Lord-like effect, it's not end of the world because we have so much sacrificing outlet built in, not an issue. Um, Leap works really well in the deck because you can stack these tokens to try and find better creatures and then you can sack them to find another creature and just keep recurring it. I love Perilous Raids, I want to see more people play with it. It's only a dollar this uncommon. Pay one to sack a creature, search your library for a land with a basic type. Like I said in previous videos, a land with a basic type it doesn't have to be a basic land. You can get shock lands, you can get your high roller dual lands, you can get your best lands you can afford. Razaketh, we can get real greedy, we have all these tokens, let's sacrifice them, let's tutor for win conditions. And Marin, she works really well in the deck. You have so many tokens being sacrificed, experience counters gained, resurrect more creatures. In terms of Planeswalkers, I think only two really support the deck. Liliana, her plus one makes a token and mills us two. That's what we're all about. We're gonna block her, a sack her, and we mill two. She can also resurrect from our graveyard. We can't really go wrong there. That's what we're trying to do. The new Vraska, her plus two is Izone's ability, really. If you would sacrifice another permanent, you, if you do, you gain one life and draw a card. So with Izoni, you pay two, gain two, draw two. That's pretty efficient, you can't go wrong there. Um, and she has removal built in. So these two Planeswalkers kind of support the deck. You can run all your Guruks if you want to in this, is, but these two kind of support the game plan we're going with anyway. Now in terms of lands, not too many that are important, like you've run obviously the correct amount of basics and your dual lands, but you could run an Urobog Filth combo because you have Gerard's orders, so you could tutor for Filth, put a straight into the graveyard, good time, find your Urobog at some point, Whole team has Swamp Walk. Um, High Mark and Grim Backwards would probably be a must have. A sack outlet again on land. You want all the sack outlets you can have so your opponent can never take it away from you. And if you're going the Ourobog route, if you've got a Cabal Coffers, you know, double up your mana. But 40 bucks, I don't blame you if you don't want to. Now, 
there are other cards to put in the deck, but the actual meat of the deck, like the creatures where you want to fill up for your graveyard, have some low to medium costed creatures. You want to have a good curve, but pick creatures that have got good effects, like either little rampers, tutor out lands, destroy artifact enchantments on entry, um, shriek more, things that can hit other creatures or problems. Um, Deathrite Shaman is great in the deck. Probably have him because of all the graveyards you can play with. Because these creatures need to be cast efficiently and easily, they need to die to fill up your graveyard to support Izoni. You don't want them out there too long. And plus, if they get milled, you want to be able to resurrect them easily enough because of the lower cost. So, try and have, yeah, a low, medium, efficient creature base that you're okay being in the graveyard with. So, like always, guys, there's probably plenty of cards I haven't mentioned with Izoni. She's pretty versatile commander. She's not like an infinite combo heavy commander. That's, all, that's not her game plan. It can happen, but she's not trying to do that. She just wants to win a fair game of attrition on the ground with her creatures, sacrificing hers, make you sack yours, and draw a few cards along the way. She's a really good commander. I love that she can do it all herself. She brings her own army, she can gain your life and draw your cards. She does it all herself. She's really cool. Let me know your thoughts below, guys. How do you rate Izoni? Is she potentially the best commander from Guilds Ravnica so far? Maybe. I know you Gulgari players out there are pretty passionate. Alright, let me know your thoughts, guys, and have a good one. See ya. Thanks for watching, guys. Please remember to like and sub and click the bell icon for notifications. It's greatly appreciated. And if you have any deck or video ideas, just suggest them down below. And have a good one, guys.